I see me free program at Washington State Prison. E2 Honor Dorm. Bryce Garrett, Terry Shorter, Marvin Martin, Cecil Johnson, Joseph Taylor, Fessy Laney. And there are others, correct? And there are others that's coming. And my name is William Bars. I direct Life Changer Legacy since 2021. I met Pamela Hillman in March of 2021, Chaplain Hillman, three months before my mom died. My mom died in May. Chaplain Hillman asked me two weeks after my mom died, what do I miss the most about my mom? And I said, calling her every day at 4.30. She said, well, I want you to call me every day at 4.30. Chaplain Hillman has pulled me over a great obstacle, a wall, that I would have never been able to get over if it wasn't for Life Changer Legacy, I've seen this free program. And I thank her so much and everyone dedicated to this program. Thank you. Cause of life-giving ministry, Miss Pam and her husband and, and uh, William here, a uh, brother William, I have become to be able to be, I've seen changes in my life in the last past two or three months, and I know he have too. And I thank y'all very much. And I'm hoping with all hope, because that's what it's about, because the one word hope that the book teaches me in phase two, is hope against hope and this hope that i got this hope that i have i hope to be able to come to this program and continue doing it and succeed in what god has for me amen and brother I, I have great remorse for everything or anything that i have done i entered the program because um i like a challenge and i like change um i for one i think it will enlighten me my mind my vision of God, uh, help, I guess, unify the people in a group, uh, companionship, compassion, the love, sharing, and I guess, you know, uh, all kind. I mean, you, you can just be yourself in a group. So, I mean, the group is a nice group. I really appreciate the group. And like I say, it's a big challenge to me. I don't want to hold. Thank yes. you, brother. When I first started the group, I didn't think I had a patience. To, to keep going, but being in the group, it taught me patience. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad I stayed in. And um, I'm learning a lot from the guys. And um, I hope to, you know, carry on over and be a new change person. And um, I thank y'all for everything that you do. And I appreciate it. I had a lot of brokenness in my life before I came into this program. And since I've been in the program, all those things have changed. Uh, my attitude, the way I see things, uh, it have given me a different perspective of how to deal with people in general. Uh, program has taught me to understand that the change come about when you try to accept God and do the things that's right. And through my brokenness, my path, you know, which I probably never changed, I try to seek forgiveness in the wrong that I have done. Uh, yeah, they have really carried me over the last couple couple of years, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I really am grateful. Thank you. First of all, I just want to give thanks to the Lord for uh, for putting me right here in this prison right now at this very moment because He's got a reason for it. Um, I want to thank y'all, family, and uh, and Life Changers Legacy for uh, for helping me through some hard times in my life. I came into the program, I was um I was in a bad way. I was uh, addicted to a bunch of different type of drugs. I was uh, I had no self esteem whatsoever, and I had fallen fallen far away from the Lord. Um, because of you guys, because of fellowship, you know, I, I've learned that it's okay to talk about your feelings. It's okay, you know, I'm not the only person going through this. Um, you know, there's other people out there that I can reach out, and they and they're, and they're willing to reach out and help. And so I want to thank you guys for that. And um, and uh, thank you, God, for incarceration, Lord. And uh, I just uh, I also learned that it's, it's more than that. It's more than being sober. It's about uh, it's about being a good man, man, a man of God. That's, that's about all I got. Thank you, guys. I met Pamela Hillman, Miss Pamela Hillman, in 1988 in a movie set. She has been more to me of a sister than than I could ever possibly imagine. She's always been real, loving, caring. She told me she was gonna have a ministry one day, Shabar, and I see that she's had this ministry for many years now. This program that she has, I see me free. I entered this program 
I have learned more in this little bit of time, the last three or four years, than I have in my whole life of living. I find that I could be honest with myself, that I could be honest with others, and I can most importantly be honest with God. No matter what I've done in the past, God forgives. God has a plan for my life. God will never leave me, for, forsake me. He supplies all our need. He heals us. He's our everything. I am learning more every single morning that I wake up and read my Bible and pray and get into this workbook. It's, everything is right on time just for that moment, just for that morning, just for that day. And it never ceases to amaze me, the knowledge that I'm learning and the wisdom. The love that I've been looking for is with God. The love that I've been looking for on my life is right here with my family, with Life Changers Legacy, I See Me Free program, with Mr. and Mrs. Pamela and Oz Hillman. Thank you all. It's going to be so awesome to be out there sharing my testimony and preaching the word of God to break the chains to set the captives free. God is doing all that just for you and for me. Praise God. I want to introduce Stephanie. She is my goddaughter. She has five children. And it's, it's an amazing story how God connected me with her years ago. And I've just really just been her mother. And uh, she is bringing my man, D. That's my little man. That's my D man. Come on up, D. Come on, Stephanie, beauty queen. Stephanie Gordon, my goddaughter. Good evening. My name is Stephanie, and this is my son, Dakarian. And on today, I wanted to show my gratitude and appreciation for Miss Pamela and all the wonderful things that her Life Changer Legacy Ministry have done in me and my son's life. Um, she is truly an angel in human form. She came into my life six years ago when I was homeless and I was lost. Um, I did not have a stable upbringing as a child, so my foundation was a little rocky and I viewed the world and people differently. Um, I had a void that is now filled since Miss Pamela and Life Changer Legacy has been a part of me and my kids life. Recently I made a life altering decision and fortunately, she was there to support me all the way with the transition. Um, she provided me with all the tools that I would need to be successful. Her unconditional love for me and my kids restored my faith in God. Today, I stand here as a healed woman. I am successful. I am stable. I am loved. I just wanted to take this time to thank God for allowing you to be such a blessing in our lives. The world is becoming a better place because you are a part of it. The light, the love, and energy that you bring into others' lives give us hope for the present and the future. Um, you're such a beautiful person on the inside as you are on the outside. I am so thankful for you. I love you, and I just want to thank you so much for all that you have done for me and the kids, and happy birthday, happy anniversary, and I love you again. Thank y'all. That's my D-man. That's my little D-man. Thank you, baby. I would like to introduce Craig Berkman. He is on our board, and he has Free at Last Coalition. And it's really, the prison system is so corrupt. It really is, guys. It's a big business. And so I would like Craig to come up and tell you more about what he does, which is phenomenal. And he's partnered with us, and we've partnered with him. Yes, please. I want you to. This one or you want? Well. Uh, good evening. It's a it's a privilege to be here to honor Pam and her. Redemptive Ministry, Life Changes Legacy. But before I begin, uh, can we just uh, bow for a quick word of prayer? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. 
I'd like to ask us to take just a couple of minutes to contemplate two questions. Where is your faith? As you think through every minute of every day, every day of every week, every week of every month, every month of every year, as you look at the majority of where you spend your time, what is your faith on? Many people say, well, I guess I give a lot of my commitment to my family, my job, education, you know, trying to make sure that I'm giving more than I get. And you, go, you can go right on down a list, but in, eternally, in eternity's value, do all those things really matter? Do they really matter? In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, we are taught, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not under your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Now, it's easy for some of us who, by God's grace, and as Pamela talked about it, bless her heart, God is going to honor somebody's memory if they're trying to memorize his word. And knowing the scripture, being saved as a young boy, never the loss, nevertheless, I spent all too many of my precious years going down a rat hole. By American standards, I had all the success in the world. Started a company when I was in my 20s, was worth multiple millions of dollars before I was 30 years of age, known seven U.S. presidents on a first name basis, stayed at the White House, flown in Air Force One, had a singing career with Count Basie and Lionel Hampton. He used to kid me I was the only white boy on the bus one day, Lionel said to me, for a white boy, you got a black rear end. I said, why do you say that, Lionel? He says, because you got rhythm. <laughs> but with all those marvelous things, a first-rate education, etc., at age 72, there was a knock on my door on March the 13th of 2013, and the U.S. Marshals were there to arrest me, and I didn't come home until four years and eight months thereafter. A few short weeks after that, I found myself, ironically, here in Atlanta, Georgia, at the Maximum Security Prison, one of the oldest prisons in the United States. Rats on the floor, dirt on the floor, Put into a solitary cell, no blanket, no pillow, no sheets, a steel bed, given paper clothing, and I was so cold, I was literally shaking. And the Lord said, I'm with you. And I cried out to him, and lo and behold, I had one of the best night's rest I've ever had. The next morning, we had one hour, and I met a young man who just had met the Lord, and uh, he shared his testimony with me. We went back to our cell, and I prayed to the Lord, Lord, if I could just have a Bible, in 20 minutes or less, there was a knock on my door, and a guard shoved the book through where they give the, the food, and in that book was a little note that the Lord had tapped the heart of my young friend Jim and there was a Bible. Fast forward the story. I go to the second question. Solomon said, we're to guard our hearts for out of it springs the wellspring of everything. Our skills, our talents, they're not who we are. If you think about it, your heart and your mind depend on what you think, 
what you say and where your feet go. And so, by God's grace, we've seen and heard tonight how God transformed Miss Pamela's life and all the things that her heart has brought about to honor him because the Lord changed her heart, continues to work on her heart, and she commits her heart each day to honor and serve him. So in closing, I wanted to say that while I was in prison, the book of Habakkuk said, when you get a vision, write it down and wait for it, for it will surely come. It will not lie. And I read an article entitled, Yep, Freedom, or excuse me, Slavery is Still Legal in America. And if you go read the 13th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, supposedly the amendment that outlawed slavery at the end of the American Civil War, there's an exception clause in there, and that means that the state and their agents, private prison operators, can treat every incarcerated person literally as a slave. They fight firefighters and put their lives on the line in California, paid nothing. If they apply to be a firefighter when they get out, they can't get a license. They pick cotton and they do other things at Angola State Prison. If they don't pick a quota, they're put in the hole or solitary confinement. There are people that are beaten, raped by guards. No ramifications because they're a slave. So the Free at Last Coalition is partnering with Pamela and her group to bring about, hopefully, an end to slavery in America. We're praying that the Congress of the United States will rid us of this original sin in a temporal way, and that 38 of the 50 states will ratify this amendment so that we'll be free at last. So in closing, finally, let me say, I congratulate Pamela on her birthday and on the 10th day anniversary of her wonderful organization. But let me tell you something that I'm really grateful for. This is another birthday that Pamela and hopefully each and every one of you have had. And that's the birthday that you got when you accepted the Lord as your Lord and Savior, your second birth. And it all becomes because of his amazing grace how sweet how sweet that sound that saved a wretch like you and me we were law once were lost but now we're found. We were blind, but praise God we now can see. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Wow, that was amazing. Thank you. So Thalisa Ward was in our program in prison, and she is so phenomenal. She has a an amazing business of her own. She's, she's just doing amazing things. And now, Felisa, come. <laughs> You're going to do great, girl. You got this. Well, hello, everyone. I just want everybody to stand up, please, just for, to give this lady amazing. You have to stand. She has changed so many lives. Act like you at church, because we are here to celebrate someone near and dear to me and so many others that you would not believe. Okay, I'm already crying, but there's happy tears. 
Okay, all of my videos, if you go back and look, I'm looking like this because I'm so thankful. I was incarcerated in 2016. I'm 55 years old. I don't know which one is worse. Go at 48, 45, or go at 20. So whatever I was doing, I must have been pretty good at it. That's the way I had to look at it in order to keep a smile on my face. In order to help others, I had to get real. And I had to understand, you cannot come out of here the way that you came in. So I was searching. And I'm just around young ladies that, huh, they think this is a joke. This is nothing to play with, young ladies, is what I'm thinking. In jail, I was like, oh my God, I'm in a place with, what, six women and two toilets. I can't believe it. Okay, I come from a well-to-do family. My mother and father were high school sweethearts. Voted most likely to marry in the yearbook. I know my fraternal and maternal grandparents. They taught me a lot about love, respect, and religion. So I had a great upbringing. I graduated from high school barely because I had smoked my first marijuana joint at 13 because I had issues that I kept a secret and it kept me sick. I'm from Los Angeles, so y'all know Snoop Dogg and him? Huh? Anybody in know Snoop Dogg? <laughs> well, just to say, I would like to ask the question, how many people here has actually been to prison or know someone that's there now, by a show of hands? <sighs> I'm not alone. I had to realize in order for me to be set free, I had to talk and say some things. I had to talk to counselors that did not care. I had to talk, and I had to run them down because I'm trying to change my life here. And guess what? God sent my bunkmate. She had Pamela's sheets of paper. When they first got, I guess, in the jail system, they were threaded with ribbon, and it was only like five pieces of paper. She said, here. Take this. You need it more than I do. You're, you're never coming back here. And the prisoner and the, the, um, the POs, parole, I mean, the, who are the police in the jail? See, I've forgotten. Thank, yes, thank God. I'll be in the grocery store telling people, oh, yeah, I went to prison. They'd be like, what's wrong with this lady? I'd be like, honey, I was set free. I help people now. I was, help, I was a mentor in the uh, jail and prison, and then I was introduced to her where I waited three months for a mentor. And within that three months, she gave me a, guide, a game plan that now I have a cosmetology school, okay? That I, I wanted to help people in re-entry, but I don't force people to do anything. I don't have any children, so I don't know how to act like a mother. I'd be like, you better do this. This is your life we talking about. They'd be looking at me like, what, lady? I don't care nothing about that. But guess what? I get a lot of people that want what I have. And everything that I have, I can put it on having a mentor in prison. I did not know the Lord Jesus Christ. I used to be driving down the street, drinking and driving, and that voice say, stop, go back. I run up on the curve, just get the car fixed and keep going. I did not trust that small voice because I don't trust me. But today, with this program, Lord Jesus knows. I listen to it every time and I can't go wrong. Every time. And I would not have had that if I didn't have a mentor in prison because did nobody else care but me and her. She saw something in me that I could, did not even see in myself. My mother 
she didn't know what to do. But that's okay, because now I didn't have to use the program like others, so I stand up here before you today for them. I go back and I speak in jails and prisons, but I'm standing up here for them today. Become a mentor is so easy. You mentor and mentee, everybody is a mentee now. Okay, we learn from one another. I was just amazed at how much I was helping someone just by smiling. So with that, I'm gonna go because I'll do just like Pam, I keep here. <laughs> and thank you. But I was able to go to my mother's, I did not have to, but I will be opening up a transitional center and helping more people and as many people as I can. Thank you and you guys enjoy the rest of your night. And she mentors them in prison now. So, yes. Cheryl, she has been a mentor for a couple of years now. She has three mentees. Four? Yes, four mentees. And she's going to speak on it. So one of my favorite parts about being a mentor is actually sending cards to the mentees. I really love to write to them and encourage them. Um, <clears throat> recently, well, I had three mentees, and a fourth rec um, actually asked me if I personally would be her mentor. I had never met her before, and I was kind of curious, like, why she wanted me to be her mentor. And But I, I said yes, because... You know, someone personally requested me. Um, when she started writing me, I was able to hear why she wanted me, and so I'm going to tell a little of that story. So she wrote me, <clears throat> I have received a couple of cards from you. I have to tell you the first one took my breath away. My daddy passed away March 3rd, 2020, and daisies are my favorite flower, and they're what my mother takes to his memorial every time she visits him. I've really been missing him lately more than ever, and it brought me a lot of sorrow. So the first thing I see on your card is a beautiful daisy and a little red ladybug. My mother has called me angel bug since I was about six or seven years old. So I felt like in the midst of my storm, needing comfort from my parents, God sent you as a reminder of the love and comfort for both my earthly parents and him. Thank you for allowing God to use you. And then she told about the second card I sent her. But then she said something that really, really floored me. She said, however, what you really don't know is that I have received three other cards from you. Well, I had only ever sent her those two cards, so I was curious to see what she said. And she said, <clears throat> they really have brought me comfort and reprieve in many times of need in the last three years. And again, I didn't know her back then, so I was curious. And then she went on to tell me that she received them from a different mentee that I was mentoring named Melissa. And Melissa had passed them on to different people and given them cards. And she received encouragement, and she saw my name on there and requested me. The thing with Melissa, though, is <clears throat> unfortunately she committed suicide about a year ago. But yet, you know, even with that, and, um, well, she was young. She was like 24, in for life because of murder. And she was paralyzed from her neck down. So I think she was just really, really hopeless. And, but I, I do feel she found Jesus as her Savior. And she had some hope, and she was passing those cards on. So we, we just never know the impact of you know, the words we write, the encouragement we give others as, as a mentor. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. That's amazing. I heard the whispers. <laughs> I listen well. I would like to introduce Nathan. Where are you? Okay. So Nathan is, I'll let him tell his story, but he's, partnered with us. He is a paralegal and he does amazing work, but he's also an I See Me Free student. So I'll let you have it from here. Thank you, Miss Pamela. Hi, I'm Nathan. Happy birthday, Miss Pamela. And um, <clears throat> I just, I'm kind of new 
in the Life Changer scene. It was, uh, I served five years in prison, and I got out about a year ago. And in prison, I learned the law. I took paralegal courses and became certified as a paralegal and worked all the law libraries and the prisons I went to and helped a lot of guys, you know, get out and all that from in there. So when I got out, I just continued it. Now I'm in pre-law school, and I'm planning on going to law school next year. So I work for an attorney who is partnering with Pamela. We are Jana Harris Law, which Jana Harris is going to come on here in a minute. But before I introduce her, um, you know, when I was about six months out, I was feeling kind of lonely. I live in southwest Georgia, down near Warner Robins area. I used to live in Atlanta before I was incarcerated. I lived up here 12 years. But anyway, I was feeling kind of like alone down there. Like, I don't, you know, where's my group of people? So I, uh, I, got a, I found Pamela through another person and called her and left a message. And we just started talking. And, and now, you know, I'm working through the I See Me Free and we meet every Friday for an hour or two, whatever, and we discuss the, the, the teaching. So it's helping me. I never knew about it in prison. When I was in there, I had a different path. But what I'm doing out here is working through it, and then I want to help her spread it to the probation offices and to the, um, you know, the probation centers and all the places around that need it out here through community supervision. Because the prison itself is doing good. You've got all these mentors. I know you need more and all that, but you've got that system going. I want to help with out here when they're transi you're transitioning from community supervision, because I still got a couple years of probation left, you know? So I'm, even though I'm working in the legal field and I, I'm a board director for another criminal justice um, organization in Atlanta, I'm still on probation. And so I still am living this, trying to learn how to not just stay out of prison, but actually be successful while I'm on probation. So when she asked me to come up here and talk and stuff, I was kind of excited. I used to be a pastor for many years, and, uh, and I haven't spoken in front of a crowd like this in probably 11 years. So it's nice to see all of you guys. I don't feel nervous. I guess it's like riding a bike. You don't really forget, right? <laughs> I'm a Mux family. But the biggest thing about the program I want to say is that I have done a lot of different mental health. I'm certified peer specialist in Georgia for mental health. I work the DBHCD. I help people who have mental health conditions and addiction conditions. And um, this program has the ability to change the inside of a person. And so it's been changing my core beliefs of who I am. It's changing my insides. It's changing how I view myself, how I view the world. And there's never been another program that I've ever seen like that. So I wanted to say that, Pamela. And I'm so proud of you, what you're doing, and I'm so glad that I get to be a part of it and change myself. So Rick gave me the wrap-up sign. So um, let's go ahead and uh, see if we can get uh, Jana up here. This is Jana Harris. She's an attorney. She's been in uh, for 30 years in Atlanta. She specializes in parole law. We help guys and gals get out of prison. And uh, I work with her as her, her senior paralegal. I put some cards over there if you want a cards after you see her. She's been doing this for a long time. And she specializes. And she's one of the only attorneys in, in the state of Georgia that can go before the parole board personally and visit them. So... Very powerful woman here. So I hope we can get her on Zoom. Can we do that? Oz and I went to the National Prayer Breakfast in uh, Washington, D.C. in 2019, I think. And I had just come off of a fast, and we were getting on the elevator to go up and rest after so many sessions in that place. And I looked at him and I said, you know, I think I want some chocolate. I hadn't had chocolate for 30 days, guys, so it was time for chocolate. So we turned around, we walked up the stairs to the little gift shop, and who is walking is Mike Lindell. And I said, Oz, he was ahead of me. I said, Oz, I said, it's Mike Lindell. It's my pillow guy. He says, ah, uh, what would Mike be doing here? And I said, I know my pillow guy, it's Mike. <laughs> so 
uh, we walk over and he's steady down. He's looking at his phone, looking up, walking. And, and I, I starts talking to him and he says, listen, listen, we know all about your story. He was a crack addict. I mean, you know, all this. His story's amazing. You guys have a free book, okay? It's in your bag if you haven't seen it, okay? <laughs> so um, he starts telling him my story and he, he, he said, we know your story, but you got to hear her story. Our stories are very similar. Mine has a lot more <laughs> to it, but... Um, so he said, Mike says, you know, I've had two divine appointments since I've been here. You're definitely one of them. I don't ever do this, but I'm going to give you my cell number. So he gives, he says, I want to talk to you next week. And so we've just been buddies since then. And he's partners with us in the ministry. He loves the workbooks. He uses it in his Lindell recovery, recovery network. And just so many things that he partners with us in. Yep. Yep. I can hear you. All right, well, well, hello, everybody, and, and Pamela, I'm really sorry I couldn't be there in person, but I did try to make it happen, but this is our busiest time of year, and I couldn't get away this time, but, and I hope you all enjoy my book that I've gifted to you on behalf of the amazing ministry there. Um, Pamela and I have a lot of similar, very similar stories, as a matter of fact, as you discover that when you read her book, which uh, I'm looking forward to writing the foreword of it, and um and, uh, you know, Pamela, you've really, you've really worked hard since last year. And con I want to congratulate you on getting your master's degree in Christian education. Uh, that's so important to be continuing learning to be better and fully equipped to do what God's called us to do. And that's exactly what you continue to do. And I'm very proud of you. And uh, um, now I want to brag about the I See Me Free program. Uh, you guys, this is amazing, and it is absolutely awesome. Um, it's, uh, it's the only one of its kind that I've ever seen that will help change old mindsets and bring the lasting change in Christ so that so many people in prisons all over the world, and uh, it works. And Pamela's unique approach has actually reduced recidivism. How do you say it? Recidiv recidivism. Um, uh, to as low as 2%, and uh, that's amazing. Um, you know, I've done a lot of stuff in the prisons, and and uh, that is 2% to, is that, that's absolutely incredible. And that's because of this, um, the powerful program and the health and wellness program as part of the re recovery process, as you all heard. Um, you know, there's, there's so many, um, th there are so many who have, nowhere to go once they are once they are released except for back to their old places and so many become homeless again um and how about the body of christ the you know the body of christ needs to come together to help such a huge crisis of returning citizens coming out of prisons with nowhere to go and it takes an army and a village to make that happen and that is why i'm partners with them um Tonight, we all come together to join forces with this amazing ministry in a deeper way and with greater commitment to help them provide housing for those in the I See Me Free program within the prison. And I know this works. I'm just, I can tell you about that a little bit, but these people have a, um, a foundation laid in Christ and they want a better second chance of life now. And we as the body of Christ are called by Christ to dis disciple and help them. And you can't ask for a better setup than to allow just those who have been through this incredible program to be the only ones who are eligible to come to the house. It can only succeed and become a model to, to do another one and another one and another one in other states and even my home state of Minnesota. They've shown the success model that so far is second to none. It's going to be the um, the model that other states are going to want to adapt. This is the, this is absolutely awesome. And tonight we want to ask you all to come alongside as partners in this house for those of you that have been in her program to come to. And this this truly is the best program and ministry ever. You guys, I get behind a lot of things and I vet them and um, I do my due diligence. Well. It's been years now that I, since I met Pamela, and that ministry that that she has is absolutely awesome. And and uh, and yes, Pamela, I will say happy birthday early. 
Um, but um, but you and and you guys, you know, I've done I've done a lot of stuff in the prisons, and I I just know the the to get that uh, that rate at as low as two percent. That's just absolutely amazing for. Um, and one of the things for, that I think to prevent that having this housing and having this house will be absolutely awesome. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Mike. We appreciate your partnership and all that you've uh, been uh, through with us. Um, Sam? We... So, so the last time that I was actually with you, Mike, we were on your jet coming back from Orlando from a, uh, I don't remember, oh, that was a um, AACC, a counselor's thing. Anyway. Yep. So, um, I don't know if I'm, but thank you, Mike. Thank you so much. And we'll talk next week. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, uh, yeah, I just want to say, though, that you guys can't get behind a better ministry. I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I've, uh, you know, I put my money all over the place, and uh, this, this is the number one. You want to get a return on the investment, this is where you go, because these, um, and I really believe that, so... Um, God bless you all, and thanks uh, thanks for having me on. I wish I would have been able to come on with the screen, but I guess it wasn't meant to be. I even had a, I had, it was all set for it, so. Um, well, yeah, this was great. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, Mike. Yep, thank you all. Thank I would like to introduce Cody, beautiful Cody, and Lori Ann is her mother. And Lori Ann has, well, they have a testimony, but you saw some of the pictures out front. And this is what God is doing in the lives of these women and men. We have men, we're in all the men's prisons too. First of all, I want to say that um, we overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the power of our testimony. So, and that was my daughter's testimony that she played out there and that was real. It was really happened to her. It's the same thing that happened to me. And it just got passed down, and now we're trying to break that. And so uh, I ran into Pamela. We were in prison together in 2012. And I watched her write the vision for all this on her little bunk with all her. Right out 2011. That was before that. <laughs> OK, yeah. Between 2008 and, and 12, or 10 and 12. Anyway. Um, so I watched her watch, write the vision and watched her do all those things that she showed up there, the daughter's Zion and just talking about all this and now it's manifesting in front of me, but I came in and out of her life again. Okay, so I'll just be, I'll just read this. Okay, so I lost my children uh, three times to defects. The third time they were adopted and then, um, Let's see. Let's basically just go to where I overdosed and. Okay. Let's see. Okay. I overdosed on methamphetamine, morphine, and 100 proof vodka because I, uh, instead, my organs, my organs shut down and I was on life support for a month. I went through a serious schizophrenia situation where I saw all of my family die over and over again. And I think that I was crawling around the rooms of hell. After I finally came around, I got out, and because they messed up trying to put an IV in my arm, I got a huge blood clot in my wrist, which gave me gangrene on four of my fingers, including my thumb, and I had to get four fingers amputated. And then while I was in the hospital at that time, my daughter had gotten addicted to pills and methamphetamine, so when I came out, a couple months later, we were doing drugs together. For the next two years, my daughter was in her own personal hell because she lost her children because of the drugs. And when you have two people using that are both miserable, it's pure hell. Eventually, she got arrested, which was a godsend. And while she was in there, I knew I had to get clean or she would get out and we'd be using again. I didn't know how. And so one night when I was in a drug stupor, I was calling out a number and my, my Earl thought I was crazy. He was saying, what are you talking about? I knew it was Pamela's number, but the next day we were, 
it was Mother's Day, and Mother's Mays were always rough for me and my daughter because that was Mother's Day, her birthday, and my birthday. And it just seemed like bad things always happened to us in May, which is, by the way, the month that we are now set free and delivered. So, yeah. Yeah, and so, um, it was, okay. Not even thinking it would really work because I tried so many times before to get sober and always ended up relapsing. I texted her anyways with hope. She texted me back and immediately, I was so grateful that there was one sprig of hope because she had always been drenched in God. We talked and I told her that I knew I was gonna die soon and I was so, cause I was so unhealthy. We, we made a plan for her to come Sunday and pick me up and she did and she immediately took me and dipped me in the baptism pool. So, <laughs> and then took me to the hyperbaric chamber, gave me a new schedule made personally for me to begin new habits, a bag full of vitamins and, let's see, and shakes to make my mind and body healthy again. It uh, immediately began memorized Luke 10, 19, all power and authority has been given unto me heaven and on earth to cast down serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy so that nothing shall in any way harm me which I said every time I passed the liquor store or the wine aisle in the grocery store anyway she gave me the number to her prayer warrior and told me to call her every single day after I slept for a week during which I had a dream of a dictionary page with the word sanctify was glowing and I looked it up as soon as I woke up and it said the action or process of being freed or sin, from sin or purified. I got up and began doing all the things she told me to do. Then Pamela wanted me to work for the ministry, and I didn't think I would be able to do it right. I just never thought I'd eventually mess it up. But it just flows. I know it's my calling. It's like I've been training for it my whole life. All the bad things I went through is for to minister to the girls that are in there. Um, then Cody started staying at Pamela's with me three days a week for over a year we did this. We were able to see how she lived. And just like Jesus shows people how to live. He would stay with them and tend to them and show them how to live and minister to their needs. So God gave us the grace to do that every single week for over a year whether we wanted to or not, because if I ever started not wanting to, God would say there's a good reason why we're having to do this. Just do it. And the only reason why I didn't want to is because I didn't want to get out of my comfort zone sometimes. I just want to be comfortable. I don't know if she realizes it or not, but this has been, had she not requested that I had done that, I know that I would have slipped back into my old habits and ways. Over a year and a half later, I'm still and forever delivered free from drugs and alcohol. I quit smoking cigarettes, a pack of cigarettes a day, and then um, all my blood test numbers that were, were perfect now, where they were extremely high and low before. I've lost 40 pounds. I came off my blood thinner first, and then my blood pressure medication. And then... Mm-hmm. I am officially, I am officially off all health med medication for my health. For the first time, I get up in the morning and I go to bed at night. For the first time in my life, my circadian rhythm is like normal, where it used to be morning and nights were my. I'm no longer depressed or schizophrenic. Now I'm mentoring the mentees that are in prison, as well as being the mentor mentee director for Life Changers Legacy. And the miracle of all miracles happened when I was in the pain clinic for my mess up disc in my back and told them immediately that I do not want to have narcotics. Not only all those wonderful things, but most wonderful of all, my daughter got court ordered to re drug rehab program, Pamela's program, and immediately started doing the same things that Pamela had showed me to do while she stayed with me which was awesome because she had to stay home with her mommy. Yeah. And <laughs> she had to, so it was cool. So, um, 
So now she's grooming dogs and doing her own thing, which you'll hear of now. And together, personal healing is still happening through doing the workbooks over and over, which we do on Tuesday nights, as well as, of course, studying the Bible and getting it in my head and heart forever. I know this all seems simple to some people, but I can't explain how impossible it was to get out of bed and function like people do every single day. It was once impossible to do in many of these things, as I mentioned, they're pure miracles. Now May is our deliverance month and a new life. It will never be tainted again. In Jesus' name. Okay, my name is Cody, I'm 26 years old, and this is my testimony. Just three years ago, I was a working mother of two young boys and a wife to a loving husband. I had it all, a house, a car, my dream job as a dog groomer. The only thing lacking was God and my happiness. I eventually became so miserable with myself that I had turned to drugs, and within six months, I was divorced and homeless and lost all contact with my children. Addiction took over my life completely. I started stealing and no longer cared about myself or anyone around me. I wanted to go to rehab, but I just couldn't bring myself through the process of going. I was dying in sin, literally. That picture on the front table of the girl with the scabbed up face, that's me. You can literally see it was bad. Um, on April 22nd, 2020, it all came to a halt when I was arrested for some serious charges. During the six month stay in Douglas County Jail, I became fully devoted in God's word. My mom sent me Pamela's workbook and told me about her program, and before long, almost everyone in my dorm became a part of her program also. I watched, I watched God's divine healing come on so many of the women in there, including me, as we worked the program together. On September 15, 2020, I was finally released from jail into Pamela's incentive mentorship program. Since that time, I've become a part of her Life Changers Legacy Ministry, and let me tell you, it is truly a life changer. I have been baptized, forgiven, set free, and I am ecstatic to be a part of changing lives around the world. I have accomplished goals that I never saw myself accom accomplishing before, such as getting my CPR certification and hyperbaric certification. I recently started a new job as a dog groomer, and I am also getting things together to start my own mobile grooming business. It's amazing to watch my dreams manifest right before my very eyes. I am excited to give hope to those who are now where I used to be and share with others our Father's love and that they too can become the person he has chosen them to be. I've also completed my program, or my probation and Pamela's program as well. I'm also so blessed to say that God ha has restored my relationship with my children. I now get to bring my kids home with me every other weekend and video chat with them daily. I am also so excited to announce that through hard work, dedication, and a great support system, I am one year and eight months sober. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sober from meth, heroin, and the lifestyle that comes with it. I couldn't have done it without a precious and loving father above. All the glory goes to him. I once was bound by the unbearable chains of shame, guilt, and heartache. Today, I see me free. I'm Cody. I'm a toy... 26 year old child of God, and my story is not over yet. This is why we do what we do at Life Changers. You know, and without partners, we cannot impact lives like this. So this is vitally important for you guys to come alongside us. However, whatever that looks like in your world, you know, we don't know. But there's so many ways to partner with this ministry. So, okay, Oz. And thank you guys again for your patience. All right. Uh, if you have any envelopes left, just hold them up and somebody will come around and get them. Thank you so much. Also, if you want to text uh, giving, you can just... Uh, send it to 205, and then the message life changers will give you an option for, uh, uh, do you want to say something? You can't say anything. Oh, gosh. Just one more thing, guys. Just one more. more. I've got to introduce Rick Arajo. He's the director of operations. I just want to give him a, a quick minute, if you guys have one minute, please, because he's... You know, he's part of the team, and he's, he's very vital and does a lot. He actually has an online course, and that's how we met. 
is that um, he was sending out emails to, oh, go ahead. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, long night. I'm sure you're all tired. First and foremost, I want to thank John and Barbara Hitchens. Uh, they donated 104 Bibles to the ministry tonight with John and Barbara. <laughs> Thank you, John. John is the CEO of HisWillHomes.org. They're an organization out of uh, Lebanon, Ohio, and they build housing for uh, the mentally struggling people, the homeless people. Uh, awesome, awesome organization. Um, just a quick word about vessels. Holy Spirit really laid this on my heart, that really what this is all about is one willing vessel and what's interesting about it is because she was willing and created all the infrastructure the next willing vessel was all of you because every step of the way every time Holy Spirit led Pamela to creation of individual programs right behind that was the donors so I don't know if you've ever equated it to that, but this willing vessel could never have gone 10 years without you. So we celebrate you, we appreciate you, and just have a great evening. Amen. Thank you, Rick, and thank you guys. So if you want to hang out, and <laughs> we've hung out a lot tonight, haven't we? <laughs> So, but I do thank you all so much, and if you want to become a mentor, we have a sign-up sheet. Like I said, it takes an hour a week. It's through email, video visit, and cards. It's a really, it's simple, but it's really making an impact. It really is. Without an undergirding support system for those in prison, they're not going to make it. You've heard so many testimonies tonight, and it works. So, sign up. Okay. Happy birthday. Thank you. It's my party. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I'm going to just have Bill come up one quick time. He's going to make a presentation, and uh, then we will close. I promise. This will be done for the night. So, Bill is our chairman of the board, has a company with Hyperbarics, and he's got me in there trying to get me healthy. Okay, we'll make this quick since the Falcons didn't play today anyways. So um, <clears throat> without all of you being here uh, and to, to carry a torch, the reality is that where two or more are gathered, we all hear our prayers. And so uh, there's no coincidence that you are all here tonight, each and every one of you. There's no chance. It wasn't by chance. There's a reason that you're here. So uh, this is a very special day and a very special time for Miss Pamela. She's touched a lot of lives, including mine and uh, families at our clinic. And so, Miss Pamela, I just want to tell you uh, thank you for what, what you do all across the world and all across this country. And for the people like Cody, you're the reason I'm here, Cody. I lost a 26-year-old nephew to heroin that he tried it one time. So one more time and you wouldn't have been able to tell your story. So those are the lives that you're saving, uh, uh, Ms. Pamela, and uh, we just want to thank you for that, and I can't express that more than, than that at all. So on that note, I'm here to present to you for the 10th year anniversary, December 2022, the Life Changers Legacy, Ms. Pamela, Hillman, in appreciation for 10 years of serving and returning citizens. Surely, I say to you, and as much as you did it in one for the least, of these, my breathings, you did it to me, Matthews. Writing's very small, it's hard to see. <laughs> so, Ms. Pamela. If y'all could stand up and just give her a hand. Everybody could just stand up and really give her a hand. <laughs>